Good evening, you are watching the special edition on CBC. I am Eldar Rasulov. Today, people of Azerbaijan are celebrating the National Flag Day. This year, the Honorable Day has a very special importance for Azerbaijanis all around the world. A day before, President of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, announced that Azerbaijani army liberated city of Shusha from the Armenian occupation. The celebration all around the country hasn't stopped ever since. Azerbaijanis living abroad also show their solidarity and express their happiness during these legendary and historical days for the country. Azerbaijanis are confident. The powerful national army will liberate all of the occupied territories and there will be even more occasions to celebrate. Meanwhile, Armenian aggression is being condemned all around the world. Experts, public figures emphasize that getting defeated on the bat battlefield, the military political leadership of Armenia is conducting the policy of terror by shelling the civilian population of Azerbaijan, cities that are located far from the conflict zone. Today, the guest of our special edition is the descendant of Irevan Hans, Amir Ali Sardar Iravani. Mr. Iravani, thanks a lot for dedicating your time for us. Thank you, too. Uh, first of all, I'm sure it would be interesting for our viewers to hear more about your uh, origins and your ancestor, as you are the descendant of Irevan Hans. Uh, that's really fascinating. So before starting our conversation, I would like you to tell more about yourself for our viewers. For sure. So I would just say hello and good evening from Germany. My name is Amir Alisadar Iravani. I'm uh, the, a descendant of um, Iravan Hans in the seventh, sixth and seventh generation. I'm living in Germany. Um, in this very special uh, situation, I would like to congratulate the liberation of Shusha, the historical and cultural capital of Azerbaijan. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Irvar Irvani, if I'm not mistaken, you visited Azerbaijan last year. You met with scholars, uh, diplomatic r representatives and so on. And you, but you couldn't visit the Nagorno-Karabakh region of Azerbaijan that has been under Armenian occupation for more than 30 years. Today, victorious Azerbaijani army is liberating all of uh, the occupied territories one by one. Uh, people have been celebrating the liberation of the center of culture of Azerbaijan, Shusha. And what were your thoughts and feelings when you heard about this wonderful news? Do you hope that during your next visit to Azerbaijan, you will be also able to visit Nagorno-Karabakh region of Azerbaijan? Yes. Um, so, Shusha is actually the homeland of the soul of all Azerbaijanis. It's the capital of um, spirituality, um, culture and literature. Um, Shusha is, uh, is, is an exhibition of the beauty, the cradle of literature, the cradle of mugam and music. Um, in the past, the travelers from all over the world described Shusha um, as the living museum of the earth. So uh, in, in last year, it was my first visit to Azerbaijan, but uh, as you already mentioned, it was not possible to me to um, uh, to travel to um, Karabakh. I hope um, that uh, uh, the next visit it, I would be able to visit also Shusha, which is a very important place for me. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. maybe just want to uh, confirm that the restoration of the territorial integrity of uh, Karabakh by the Republic of uh, Azerbaijan is already recognized by the international community. Um, four UN Security Council resolutions have been passed during the Karabakh conflict in 1993. Based on those resolutions, the occupying forces must withdraw from their territories of Karabakh. After around three decades, as you already mentioned, of occupation, there hadn't been any meaningful, peaceful uh, negotiations in that direction, unfortunately. So that um, about one million displaced inhabitants of those regions uh, could return to their homes. Um, it's very special uh, event today that uh, the both um, the liberation of, um, of, of, of Shusha and at the same time the flag day of Azerbaijan happens in the same and at the same uh, time. So it's a very special um, situation. Uh, I congratulate this special event to all of our nation. 
Thank you very much. I'm, I'm sure you also heard about the tragic events, the terror acts uh, conducted by the Armenian armed forces in the uh, cities, uh, Azerbaijani cities that are located far from the conflict zone in Ganja and Barda. As a result of these war crimes, more than 90 civilians lost their lives with uh, hundreds of them getting wounded. Uh, Despite the fact that Azerbaijan many times stated that it's not going to shell back and take revenge by targeting civilians in Armenia uh, and that Azerbaijan is taking its revenge on the battlefield, uh, Armenia still hasn't been prosecuted for the crimes against the civilian population. How do you assess the reaction of the international community to these events, uh, to these terrible, terrible actions committed by the Armenian armed forces? Exactly. In the last days, we had a mixed mood of happiness and uh, for the liberation of the occupied territories on Shusha on one side and um, the sadness because of uh, war crimes such as rocket attacks on innocent civilians in Ganja, Barda, Tatar and other cities. Uh, we strongly condemn these war crimes and demand uh, the international community to observe it and stop it immediately. I feel very sorry for all families who have lost um, beloved ones in this way. I would like to share the joy of liberation and also the sadness of uh, their losses at the same time. Uh, Mr. Irwani, the leadership is of Armenia is trying to hide their deeds by so-called genocide, claiming that in case if Azerbaijan uh, liberates Nagorno-Karabakh region and then Armenian population living there would be killed. However, it was mentioned many times and uh, President Ilham Aliyev also recently mentioned it in one of, one of his latest interviews that uh, Azerbaijanis and Armenians can actually live together. The head of the state mentioned that in neighboring Georgia, for example, there are villages where Azerbaijanis and Armenians both live together. Uh, the same situation is also in Russia and Ukraine. They are living together in Azerbaijan as well. Uh, actually, Armenia is uh, the country that conducted an ethnic cleansing against Azerbaijanis, against the civilian population. Uh, Azerbaijanis were, but you, you, I'm sure you know that Azerbaijanis were also forcibly expelled from Armenia, whereas 30,000 of Armenians live in Azerbaijan. What's your opinion on this regard? So, um, you're opening a big page of our history, actually. So, um, uh, our ancestors left Iravan, uh, so about 1828, um, but the most important um, part of our history happened in the First World War. Um, after the First World War, um, the events which uh, have happened um, regarding the uh, uh, foundation uh, and um, the, 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 go the government in the Armenia and at the same time in the, in the uh, in other places in Caucasus like Azerbaijan and so on. Um, there were a kind of, uh, the, um, uh, so I would say the powers in the First World War, the European powers like um, England and Russia and, and allied forces, they were um, looking for opportunities to, to um, fulfill the, um, the promises to, to, um, to, uh, to, to Armenians and other ethnic groups. They have already um, tried to motivate them to uh, betrayal against the Ottoman uh, dynasty, uh, empire at that time. After um, uh, 1918, uh, you can see that uh, this uh, this uh, current has continued. So in that direction, that um, in order to um, have a, a, a base in Caucasus, these foreign, these um, European forces have um, um, supported these activities yeah, for um, foundations such a such a um, state in that place. And um, based on that, you can see that the, the first or the, 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 um, um, the most important reason, the most important um, 
motivation for, um, to secure that place for for this kind of uh, thinking was to to make some kind of separation between ethics um, and based on this policy uh, you can see that the over decades uh, it was supported by them all the time and uh, so as a, as a as a um, as a cause a uh, chain effect you can see that uh, they expelled so many um, um, ethnics from from that um, uh, from that uh, state and at the mm -hmm. moment you can see that no um, no one no 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 you can you couldn't find just one Azerbaijani in Armenia at the moment yeah and ironically about, they are the ones who are speaking about the uh, genocide so-called genocide mm -hmm. uh, the genocide um, in the first world war there are, there are so many conflicts yeah I would say a very to to formulate very very easily um, in every war there are so many uh, victims. So, um, in in those years, there were uh, a, a, um, so, uh, many victims on all on all sides of uh, of this war. But um, making an, an excuse for um, for uh, creating this state, for example, um, uh, they they. Uh, manage to to have an excuse uh, to make propaganda on the international level, and as you can see, this genocide uh, um, is already um, uh, already in the international level. It's uh, there, there are so many forces they could uh, have uh, um, this this excuse as a great propaganda for it's uh, it's a great. Um, reason a great motivation for having this uh, for generation of this uh, state mm -hmm. uh, mr irwani there is a lot of misinformation from the uh, very first day of the last escalation of the armenia azerbaijan nagorno karabakh conflict uh, mostly fake news that are spread by the armenian media the government of the country the military political leadership of the country is not telling the truth to its people to the armenian community and they are hiding both the losses of manpower the losses on the battlefield with uh, both equipment and the, uh, they are uh, not giving their objective information about the situation on the front line they are not uh, explaining them how they are losing territories one by one and they are calling news that we publish we pu uh, they call them fake news they uh, call them to not believe the information that Azerbaijani site present however the video shootings uh, are talking by themselves. What what do you think? What can be the motives of for the Ar Armenian leadership to not talk not talking the truth about the situation on the front line? Do you think that there is a possibility of another revolution in Armenia? Because uh, sooner or later the people of Armenia will understand that uh, its government is misleading them, sending young people to a certain date to fight to fight for territories that do not belong to them. Mm -hmm. um, from the political point of view, um, I'm not really aware of this uh, important uh, point. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I could, uh, what what I could imagine um, that um, Armenia, Armenian Republic, uh, is um, not able to. Um, tell the people uh, the truth because. Um, um, even the Armenia itself um, would not recognize the um, Berk Karabakh Republic. So, um, so regarding supporting of um, this uh, separatistic um, republic, I, they couldn't. They couldn't actually um, tell the truth. Tell the, the tell the truth to the people. Um, in that direction, I just want to. Uh, I, I just think that um, this is only uh, to to uh, to hide the truth to the people. 
is the only way they could uh, manage at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mr. Irvani, uh, thanks for dedicating your time for us. I hope that in near future you will be able to visit Azerbaijan again, but uh, we hope that for this time you will be able also to visit all of the liberated territories of Azerbaijan, and we hope that soon, uh, in, very, in the very nearest future, the Azerbaijani army, the victorious Azerbaijani army, is going to liberate, liberate all of them territories that have been under the Armenian occupation. Uh, if you have any words to say to our nation, once again, please, yeah, in any wishes, any hopes for the nearest future. Thank you very much. So I want to remark, um, I may highlight the fact that each of our historical sites and cities, uh, such as Shusha, Iravan, Ganja, Baku, Nakhchivan, uh, Shaki and so on, are like um, puzzle pieces um, of our proud historical identity. Um, there are so many um, inseparable links between those pieces. It's our duty to preserve our um, heritage from censorship, distortion, and manipulation. Um, as I said before, I would, uh, I would like to share the joy of uh, liberation and also the uh, sadness of uh, people losses. Um, I, I'm looking forward to have the, new, the next visit to, uh, to Azerbaijan and hopefully uh, we could have a visit in uh, Shusha, which is a very important site, a uh, very important cultural and historical site for each of us. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Good luck. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Bye. This was a special edition on CBC. I'm Eldar Rasulov with the guest of our today's edition, the descendant of Irevan Hans, Amir Ali Sardar Irevani. We discussed the situation regarding the Armenia-Azerbaijan-Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Stay tuned for more editions. See you soon.